Hi guys, welcome back to my kitchen. Welcome back to Caribbean J03. And if you're new, welcome. And today my sister will be preparing a full St. Patrick's Day meal, including the corned beef, the soda bread, mm -hmm, and the Guinness Stout gravy. Guys, can't wait for that one. And also all the fixings, the potatoes, the carrots, the cabbage. Guys, she's doing a number. And I can't wait to taste the number. So chair, the kitchen is all yours. Good morning, guys. Today I will be making the instant pot corned beef with what was supposed to be Guinness beer, but I forgot my Guinness beer. And well, I tried to go and find Guinness beer this morning, walking in the pouring rain from one belly to the next to try to find my Guinness beer. And um, sadly, I couldn't find any. So I had to settle for, all right, I'll stop whining. I had to settle for dry red wine. Oh, have pity on me, please. If you have Guinness beer, stout, whatever you got, it's much, much, much. But all right, I'll stop. Use the Guinness beer or just leave it out and use um, extra beef broth. So back to, I'll be making Instant Pot corned beef with, yeah, dry red wine um i have rinsed my brisket brisket really my corned beef hold on it's coming there it is and i'm gonna put that in the bottom of the pot there well i'm gonna try hmm. all right i'm thinking that that might be too much so um, I'm going to take that back out because I think it will be difficult for me to stir the liquids. Ah! Hold on. Ah. Okay, so I took the meat back out because I want to be able to stir the liquids um, with the rest of the accoutrement in the pot. And I think once that meat is in this pot, it's not gonna allow me to stir properly. And well, I wanna be able to stir properly. So I'm gonna be adding about three quarters of this uh, beef stock. So probably about maybe four cups of beef stock. eight ounces of red wine but if you have guineas please put it in there this is uh, garlic minced garlic about three or four minced garlic one bay leaf three teaspoons of dry thyme or if you're using fresh thyme, then about four sprigs of fresh thyme. I am also going to put in a little bit more mustard, some um, ground mustard, only because I love the taste of mustard and the amount of mustard seeds that they have in the, um, that they have in the packet in the seasoning packet is just not enough for me. I absolutely love the taste of corned beef with the extra mustard in there. So remember those are additives for me. You don't have to add the extra mustards um, in there. I'm also going to add a half a teaspoon of black pepper. And again, that's just to supplement the black pepper corns that are in the um, seasoning packet 
And because I like to spiceify it, I am going to add a little bit of cayenne pepper, which is probably, I'd say, about a half a teaspoon. And then of course I will add my onions now. And because this corned beef is salted, I am not going to add any salt in here. So now I will add back the meat since I have stirred in my accoutrement and all the other ingredients that are in there. Oh boy. Okay, y'all, so I put the meat back in, fat side up, and I will now sprinkle the seasoning packet that came with the, um, that came with the corned beef on the top of the meat. Okay. And then I am now going to cover this up and let it put it on manual and then let it go for 90 minutes. Um, it's about my brisket is a mi Why do I keep calling it brisket? Anyways, it's corned beef brisket, I guess, right? Um, my corned beef is about three pounds. So I'm gonna let it go for hmm, probably about 90 minutes. Um, I'll see. I'll set it for a little. Yes, yeah, so I'll set it for about uh, 90 minutes indeed because I want to use that 10 minutes that it takes to come up to pressure. So um, it will go for a full 80 minutes. So I'll set it for 90. Um, if you are doing um, mm, probably around uh, two pound, um, corned beef then you want to set it for 75 minutes plus the 10 minutes that it takes to come up to pressure or if you're doing um the three pound like i am then i will set it for 90 minutes which is actually the 80 minutes of cook time and 10 minutes for it to come up to pressure if you're doing uh four pounds then you want to do about 90 minutes 90 to 95 minutes because you want to let it cook for at least 85 minutes. Um, but you can go look that up and see what works best for you. Okay, so now I'm gonna add, put the cover on. Make sure it's completely sealed and turn it to sealing. I'm not sure you can see that. Let me see if you can see my sealing button. Oh, there it is, okay. So I turned it to ceiling right there. Um, and then I am going to put it on manual and increase the time and um, put it to 90 minutes on high pressure. Okay, and let it start. So uh, once it's done, then I will let it I will let it just naturally um, release and then I will open it up and bring you back. But in the meantime though, I am going to go peel my potatoes because once this is done, I will um, take out the meat, let it rest, uh, and then I will put in the potatoes and the carrots um, to cook in this lovely broth and then taste it first to make sure that it has enough salt. I think it will. As you can see, I didn't add any salt in there because it is salted corned beef. Um, so at that point though, I will taste it to make sure that it has enough salt um, in that broth. Okay. Alrighty y'all. So um, the corned beef is done. And I let it sit for about 30 minutes so it can naturally release. So let me just turn that and make sure that it is actually going to naturally release. All right, here goes.
Oh, that looks pretty good. Oh my gosh, you don't need to smell that. Oh my goodness. I am going to take it out and put it on a sheet pan. I'm going to try to find me a very small quarter sheet. Let's see here. Yep. I'm going to set it in a quarter sheet pan. As you can see, that looks mighty fun. Ooh wee. I would say. Yep. Oh, I'm messing it up. I'm messing it up. I'm messing it up. Hold on. This isn't going to work. I need to go and get a couple spatulas. Oh my goodness. Let me get a couple spatulas. Woo. I'm coming. All right. I think that's much better. And get this one in. Oh, look at that. Thought about that all by myself. All right. Let's get this off. Well. I'm going to let that sit on the sheet pan. This looks mighty small. It definitely shrunk. Put that bay leaf back. And I will just let this rest covered with foil. Let me just show you what it looks like. All right. And there is our corned beef. And like I said, I will let that rest. I'm going to try and out cut off a piece that's hanging off on the end so that I can taste it. And I also need to taste that broth because I need to add my potatoes and my um, carrots to this broth and then let it cook. But first, I need to make sure it is salted enough. So let's try a teeny piece of, I'll try a little piece of the meat. Just a little piece. There was a little piece hanging off. So here is my little piece. It's my fiduciary responsibility to test this for you. The salt in that is just right in the meat. It has a nice little kick. And the taste is really good. That's a lot of fat. Yep, I think it has enough, um, enough salt in there for the potatoes. And the carrots so that said let me get some foil to cover the meat and then I'll put in the potatoes and the carrots okay y'all so the meat has been covered with foil I am now going to add my potatoes into this broth and be mindful that this broth is hot so don't just drop the potatoes in there because that hot broth will splatter on you. I am not adding cabbage to this because I don't have fresh or frozen cabbage, but I do have some pickled um, Brussels sprouts coleslaw that I had made. So that's what we're going to be eating this with today. But if you're making this for St. Patty's Day, which <laughs> I will make again, um, I don't really need an excuse to make corned beef. I can eat corned beef anytime. Um, I remember going to Montreal. Was it Montreal or Vancouver? Montreal. Because I remember going to visit the church where um, Celine Dion had gotten married. Beautiful, by the way. Um and there was this little hole in the wall that had 
a Reuben sandwich that I just had to try. So again, I don't need an excuse to eat um, corned beef. But anyhow, we went to this little hole in the wall and I tried that corned beef and it was one of the best corned beef Reuben sandwiches I have had outside of New York because there is this absolutely beautiful, wonderful place in Tribeca. I was going to BMCC at the time and there was this hole in the wall again. Don't ever pass up the hole in the wall, y'all. Absolutely beautiful, beautiful sandwich. It was so good you didn't even want to eat it, but of course I devoured it. That was really, really, really good. But anyhow, the one in Montreal that we tried was so good. And I never did get the name of the place. But it was pretty close to that church where Celine Dion had gotten married. Um, it was absolutely delicious. And again, it was a little hole in the wall. All I saw was the sign that says Reuben Sandwich and we were gone. Had to try it. But anyhow, um, I have put in the potatoes. As you can see, I put in more than two pounds of potatoes um, because we had extra potatoes. And thankfully, as you can see, it totally fit in there. And about maybe four to six large carrots. But this was already sweetened enough. So um, it doesn't have a sweet taste, but the carrots will most likely give it a little sweeter taste. And after this is done, I am going to um, separate the fat. So I'm going to take out all of the, the potatoes and the um, carrots and onions from there and then separate out the fat. Um, or you can just leave it overnight in the fridge, let it cool down, put it in the fridge overnight and then skim off the fat. Um, from the broth because I'm going to use that same uh, broth or stock or whatever is that juice is called. I will use that tomorrow along with a little bit of uh, Guinness, I think, if I ever find it, um, to make my gravy. So that said, I am going to put the cover back onto the Instapot and let this cook for four minutes and then slow and then release it. So there goes. And then seal and change the, okay, so you cancel this, put it back on manual, reduce the time to four minutes. And then just let it go for four minutes. And then I usually let it sit in there for, all right. So it's set to four minutes. And then when that's done, I will bring you back. Okay. I guess we're ready to go. All righty, y'all. So as you can see here, my, oh, you can't see. <laughs> Anyways, the potatoes are done, so I am going to release the steam now. So I'll just put a cloth gently over this because it will make a hot mess. And here goes. Alrighty, y'all, so it's all done, venting. So let's open this up. I might fog you out, but I apologize in advance. All right, so I'm gonna put it this way so that I don't fog y'all out. Okay, and there we go. How beautiful, huh? Very nice. All right, so now let's check the doneness on our potatoes and the Lord, I am making a hot mess, but that's all right. It looks pretty good, though, don't you think? I think that's picture wordy. <laughs> all right, let's check for doneness. 
Ooh, that is nice and fork tender as you can see. Now let's check for salt. That's a big piece that is really hot. So I'm going to have to blow on this for a second. Mmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Uh-huh. Very good. Very nice. Clearly, I'm going back for seconds. Anyhow, like I said earlier, though, I am going to take out all of this um, potatoes, onions, and carrots and put them in a bowl. And then all of the gravy, sauce, liquid, whatever is in there, I will um strain and separate out the fat most likely i'll leave it overnight in the fridge and then skim off the fat because i need the juice or the sauce that's in there um to make that gravy tomorrow so i'll let you know what that looks like tomorrow in the meantime mm, this is pretty good hold on a second though i'll be back in one quick second so oh where you are there you are so this is the jar of the um, Brussels sprouts coleslaw that I had made and um, canned. So my sister is going to link this um, video somewhere in there where she usually links stuff um, for you guys to see if you wanted to make that. So that's what we're going to eat with this, which is why I didn't put cabbage in the... Um, in the vegetables here plus i didn't have any fresh cabbage anyways or frozen cabbage like i said earlier anywho if you try this and you do anything different please do share like i said i had i don't need an excuse to eat corned beef so please do share and i will happily try it and on that note enjoy oh um since in, like i said earlier since in patty's day is coming up uh, if you guys try this for St. Patty's Day or you do something different, um, most people have different St. Patty's Day uh, traditions that are different. Um, and they may do their corned beef different as well. Please do share. I would love to try it. And again, there's no excuse for not eating corned beef any time of the year. Mm, whether it's in a Reuben sandwich or otherwise. I love corned beef. So please do share. I would love to try your recipe. Enjoy and happy St. Patty's Day. Alrighty, y'all. So today I'm going to be making... Um, Two different types of um, flavors, actually, of Irish soda bread. Um, the basic recipe will remain the same. The only two things that's going to be different is one will have raisins and the other will have craisins, which is the cranberry um, versus the raisins. So instead of dried grapes, you have dried cranberries because my mom doesn't eat um raisins and there's a lot of people who really don't eat raisins so hers will have um cranberries or craisins that said let's get started so I, in my bowl here i have um three cups of all-purpose flour um and yes i'm making two soda breads but i am not doubling the recipe every time i double a recipe i feel like something gets lost in translation so i have my other bowl of flour for the other one um and before i even got started i preheated the oven to 350 degrees and i also um lined my baking pan um, my baking sheet with parchment paper um and then i also did my oops sorry i also did my buttermilk which i only had um whew, 
I am going to try and stir this for you because I only had heavy whipping cream and um, half and half. And I was not going to use my half and half because I have plans for my coffee tomorrow morning. So the heavy whipping cream got used for buttermilk. So I added one cup and a third of buttermilk in here. I mean, um, whipping cream in here. And I added two... Um, tablespoons of white distilled vinegar and as you can see how very thick it is oh sorry <laughs> i thought you were seeing that you can see how very thick it is um because it's resembling the same buttermilk that you would get in the store so um and that is best done when the milk is at room temperature so i took it out and put it all together so this is now ready to go. Nice, thick, and ready to be put into my dough. So that said, um, I'm going to take all of my dry ingredients and put them into the flour and um, just try to break them up as best I can. Um, the recipe actually calls for uh, sugar to be put on top of the um, soda bread however I don't like to chew sugar although some people do but if you do then go for it instead of putting it in the um, I mean on top I am going to put it in so I'm adding a little bit of brown sugar to mine um, in addition to the um, white granulated sugar that the recipe calls for so i only added that one tablespoon of brown sugar but you can do whatever you choose to do if you want to add the sugar on top then you'll do the egg white and um or the egg wash and then sprinkle your sugar on top i don't particularly like that so and neither does the rest of my family but um, I might just try it again this year though, because I did have, I did it one year and I had the, um, the turbinado sugar that I had put on top and it was pretty good, except I really did not enjoy chewing sugar. So that's just a me thing. Um, anyhow, let's get started with this. So I have, um, baking soda. I'm going to put that in. And my sister will have the measurements and the ingredients um, in the description, I guess. Somewhere in there. I'm sure she'll let you know. Anyways, that was baking soda. This is baking powder. Salt. Just regular granulated salt. Oops. Sugar. Just granulated sugar. My little bit of brown sugar. It's about a, I can't remember. I think it's about a tablespoon of brown sugar that's in there. I'm also going to add a little bit of um, flax meal because I like that texture. So I'll add flax meal in there. I'm also adding a little bit of um orange zest orange zest and then my caraway seeds all right so i'm gonna mix this all up and try to find those lumps of brown sugar oh my gosh that smells good already one year I decided I was going to toast my caraway seeds, which I did, and it was very good. Um, I didn't get a chance to do that today, but if you want to try it, it just brings out a really nice nutty flavor to the caraway seeds. So I'm just mixing this together, and then I 
think that should be it. Let me just see. I got the edges. I think I got the edges. All right. I think that should be okay. I'm not seeing any major clumps of any kind. Concerned about the clumps from the brown sugar. Now I'm going to put in my butter. I do have um, butter that I had cut up very small and I am going to cut that in I don't have my pastry cutter with me I am going to just use my two knives to cut in the butter which is why I already cut them up really really small I tried to cut it up small as small as I can with the knife before I put them in you want to get the butter as small as you possibly can you can get your hands in here and just break them up if you like but I got no problems cutting it up with the knife because what happens when the cold butter melts in the in the dough it creates that beautiful air pocket um, and even though soda bread is not supposed to be a leaven, not leavened, but a, um, a soft bread, it's supposed to be a dense loaf of bread, the air pocket still helps. Mm, so let's see a few big clumps. You want them into small bits. There we are, like small bits. And if you have a pastry cutter, that, that works as well. And I usually do have a pastry cutter because I bake a lot. All right, so let me put this down. And then I'm going to switch to my dough whisk here. Okay, so now I can add in my buttermilk. I'm just going to stir that up a little bit. Okay, and of course I didn't bring a spatula, so I guess this is quite thick. Okay. I think I got most of it out. I hope I got most of it out. I'm also going to add um, a little bit of vanilla, probably about maybe a teaspoon of vanilla. That looks like about a teaspoon, I'd say. Oh, that smells good. I always love the smell of vanilla. And because I can, I'm going to add a little, little drop, I promise. Although this is one of my favorite essence. I will add a little bit of um, almond essence as well. So, ooh, ooh. Okay, so that's a little more than a little. I think that was more like a gulp. <laughs> Anyways, almond essence smells really good. And you don't really have to add that. You don't even have to add the um, the vanilla. I just add the vanilla because I love the smell and the taste of vanilla. Sorry, y'all. That's my egg. That's making all that rackets. All right. As you can see here, this needs a little bit more water. So I'm gonna go get the um I'm gonna go get the water that I had um soaked the raisins in because um I usually soak my raisins before I put it into my recipes. Um unless I'm cutting it up. And in this case I'm not cutting it up. So I'm gonna go get that water and pour some of that in here. I did reserve that specifically for this purpose. 
So let me just go get that water and pour some of it in. Because I really don't want to use a lot. I don't want to add too much water to this at all. I can just get out a little bit of this in here. I really don't want to put too much, so let's try and just get just that much in there. I'd say that probably was maybe about a quarter cup, not even a quarter cup, but maybe two tablespoons. All right. Let's just mix this until a nice dough forms. And again, you are making a dough, so feel free to add enough water or buttermilk or whatever it is that you have to get your dough to form. Um, once the dough forms, then you may be able to, you should be able to add your um, raisins or craisins or whatever it is that you want to add into it so as you can see my dough is taking its own sweet time in forming so I will add a little bit more just be very careful how much water you add because even though you may want to have a sticky dough you don't want to have a too sticky dough all right I think this is sticky enough it does look like a shaggy dough at this point. I could still see bits of the um, I am going to get my hands in there now. Haha, -ha, this is and you really don't have to get your hands in. I mean, you can use your scraper to get your dough together if you want to, but I have no problems getting my hands in there. Ha 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 ha. Because if you want to get your hands in there, you can certainly do that. Um, or you can do, you know, this sort of technique. Yeah, no, that doesn't work for me. <laughs> I need to get my hands in there. Like, I really need to get my hands in there. There we go. Mm -hmm. Oh, that feels so good. Just getting your hands in there. And it is a slightly sticky dough. So now I'm going to get my raisins. And I'm going to add my raisins. Don't worry, I didn't forget them. I did not forget my raisins at all. All right. So now as you can see it is nice and sticky look at how sticky that is so let me add the rest of my raisins i'm going to turn this over just a little bit and i'm going to add the rest of my raisins ha 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 and just put them in there and i didn't put them in earlier because i feel like when i put in my raisins too soon they end up having way too much flour stuck to it and don't worry this will all be going on a um lightly floured surface and kneading this a little bit more okay so this is slightly sticky as you can see that is where my scraper comes in get this loveliness off my hands and then I will slightly flour my surface here on the table and knead this down until it forms a nice dough and then I'll put it on my prepared baking sheet here and pop it in the oven because the oven has been heated already it already alarmed all right, now let's get this out of the bowl and onto my floured surface here. Just a little bit of flour because you want to be able to. Okay, so you want to get this nicely floured. 
Okay. So on to my flowered surface it goes. Okay. Now, get a little bit more flower. All right. Okay, so we have a nice little dome here. And I am now going to take this. I'm just going to pat it down a little bit. And I'm going to put it onto my pan. Okay, so now I'm going to get my pan over here so you can see the dough on the pan. Whoops. Are you seeing that? Yep, there you are. Okay. So I'm going to get my egg wash and this way I am going to just now do the egg wash on this and then pop it in the oven and time it. It's going to go for about maybe an hour and 10 to 15 minutes and you're going to um, turn it halfway through so that it can, um, it can get brown on all sides evenly. Uh, I am also going to cut a slit about three quarters way down, maybe an X, I'll do an X this time, about three quarter way down into the dough um, so that I can give it a place for it to um, vent. Because if you don't, it will just crack on its own and you probably don't want to do that. Okay, I'll be right back. Okay, y'all, so I got the egg white wash. It's basically just one egg white with about a tablespoon of water. Do a gentle brush. Just a nice gentle brush. So that when it comes out, it will have a beautiful brown color. So when this is done, it's good to have to serve it right away, but you'll take it off the, um, off the baking sheet and let it sit on a rack for probably about, I don't know, five, 10 minutes in my house. It doesn't last five, 10 minutes. I think <laughs> as soon as it's done, it's like, okay, is it ready? Is it ready? Is it ready? until you actually cut it because um there'll be a lot of people waiting for this so for this one since this one is going to be for my sister and i i am going to do one of the things i said i wouldn't do which was to add sugar to the top but I'm just going to add regular white sugar so that it will melt in there um, and just give it a little crust, like a little sugar crust, uh, as opposed to using the um, turbinator sugar. So I am just going to sprinkle this with a teeny bit of sugar just regular sugar and my sister will be very happy I don't know why she enjoys the crust of sugar it's a thing I'm sure okay so this goes into the oven for I'm gonna time it for the first half so it goes for an hour and either 10 to 15 minutes I'm gonna do an hour and 10 minutes um, and then halfway through I'm going to turn it so what I'm going to do is I will just set my clock to go for that halfway mark so I will set it for 35 minutes and then when that 35 minutes alarms I'll go and turn it around um, and set it for the other 35 minutes okay in the meantime though while this one is baking or starts to bake i am going to mix the other one that will be that will have the craisins um for my mother 
Alrighty then. I forgot to do my cut. Oh my goodness, and y'all didn't even remind me. So I am going to now put a nice cut down the middle. About three quarters inches down. I think that will be just fine. Alrighty, so I'm going to put it in the oven for real this time. All right. Alrighty, y'all. So I didn't get to record this last night. Um, but as you can see, this is the uh, soda bread with the raisins. And clearly we have um, devoured some of it. And this one is the soda bread that had the craisins. Um, the cranberries, dried cranberries that I had soaked. And yes, we have clearly devoured some of that as well. And I had some Dubliner cheese that I wanted to have it with or with butter. And I forgot my Dubliner cheese. So I guess I'll be having some of that again for breakfast tomorrow. Or hmm, technically, a second breakfast this morning isn't a bad idea anyways. I can also have it for a snack later this afternoon. Hmm. Okay. Well, like I said earlier, if you guys tried this recipe or if you have your own recipe and you care to share please do share because they both came out very very delicious um the caraway seeds gave it a little kick in terms of a little spice but it was really good and it will be really good with the um with the corned beef that i made uh yesterday so I'll be having that for a sandwich today. All right, you guys, enjoy. Okay, guys, I'm going to start making the Guinness Stout gravy. My sister was able to get her Guinness, Guinness Stout, and now I'm making the gravy. I'm starting with a little bit of butter. Okay, and while the butter is melting, I'm going to mix the cornstarch with a little bit of beef broth. And currently the stove is on medium heat. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, I need to lower my stove. <laughs> Last track, look at my butter getting brown. Mm -mm, stop, girl. So I'm going to pour. That's the beef broth. The Guinness stout. Hmm. Cherry, you want me to save the rest of the Guinness salt for you? <laughs> Go hear that answer right now. Ah, this is a Dijon mustard. Oh my goodness. It smells good. Okay. I'm using this. This saucepan so might it is a tad bit bigger but it's better for you guys to be able to see what I'm doing versus using a small one and I'm using my little waist because it's much more comfortable okay I need that to come up to a boil Okay, guys, and this is the Guinness Stout Gravy, just in case I did not say it. And I didn't think I did. Okay, it's coming up to a boil. Then I'm going to add the cornstarch in there. Mm -mm -mm. My sister already done the better portion of this meal. The corned beef, the potatoes, and the carrots. Guys, mmm. Mmm, this smells good. Okay, this is the cornstarch and slurry that I made with a little bit of the um, beef broth. Come to a nice boil there. Mm. 
Oh, yes, 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 Lord. Ooh. Let's load that a little bit. Oh, guys, look at that. So I'm going to put a little bit of black pepper, salt. Black pepper. Oh, guys, that look good. Smells good, too. A pinch of salt in there. And it's coming together quite fine. Thank you very much. Let's taste. Let's get a couple of spoons. The mustard is a tad bit tart. I put a little bit of sugar to counteract that just a little bit just to counteract that <clears throat> that mustard tartness and that's it guys mm-hmm mm. let's give it another taste I could turn this off because it's still gonna continue to cook Get another spoon. Oh yeah. Mmm. Oh my god, chair. This is good. Oh girl, I can't wait for you to taste this. Oh guys. Mmm. Mm-hmm. Mmm. Mmm. Mm. Girl, I'm not giving you back the rest of that Guinness stout. Mm-mm. I'll make some more gravy with that. <laughs> oh my goodness guys that is awesome yes so the guinness stout gravy mm. guys that tastes good see you guys in my next video thanks for watching and guys don't forget to give us a thumbs up oh my god this is a keeper this recipe is definitely a keeper this is good mm-mm Ooh, yeah. Okay, guys, this is the first meal, the first corned beef. And the second meal. Yes, guys, you did it twice. Tasting time. Finishing touch. Oh, my goodness. Mm -mm. I just did my thumbnail. Mm -mm -mm. Look how tender that is, guys. Tender. I don't even need the, the, um, the knife. Look at that. Okay, Cheerio. Girl. All right. You got this. You got this. Mm. Okay, guys, my sister would not finish the meal if she didn't get her cabbage. So that's how we have cabbage. Yes, guys, we have cabbage. And she makes sure to get her Guinness stout. So second one was completely done. OMG. Yes, girl. Mm. I know mom got this. Mm hmm. Mm. Let me go and finish and enjoy this. Thanks, Cheerio. Ooh, girl. Yes, yes, yes. Have a blessed St. Patrick Day, guys. See you guys in my next video. Okay, guys, I could not forget this. Mm -mm. Mm -hmm. My soda bread is good. Oh, guys, the soda bread was good with a lot of raisins. A lot of raisins. Oh, thank you, Cheerio. Okay, guys. Okay. 
my sister did this meal twice one the first one was with the red wine and she did not have any guinea stout rephrase she had the guinea stout she just forgot to bring it with her so she used the red wine that was good oh my god using the red wine that was a good substitute anyway she was not satisfied with that so she found the guineas and found the cabbage and did the full meal all over again so yes guys we got the meal twice <laughs> no comments over here and no offense either because both ways was perfect that oh my god guys they were so good and the guineas stout gravy mm, yeah they know what they were doing yes 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 ah i was gonna save the rest for my sister the rest of the guineas for my sister but i changed my mind because i'm gonna repeat that gravy oh my god that was good yes guys mom enjoyed it okay guys please don't forget that you can also follow me on my instagram page and facebook across the board it's caribbean j03 thanks for watching stay safe god bless see you guys in my next video